Coming up on Mornings on the Hill, the Dome is still being renovated as the football season kicks off. Onondaga County is looking for people to help keep the integrity of the vote. Students tune in via Zoom to Juice Jam and let us know if Boogie with the Hoodie was a hit. All that plus your weather and orange sports coming up on this edition of Mornings on the Hill. and thanks for joining us on Mornings on the Hill. And I'm Ryan Clark. Here's a look at some of the stories we'll be talking about in our first half hour. Last night a student, a Syracuse student was robbed at knife point and demanded to hand over their belongings after the mugger fled the scene. Police say he met up with an additional suspect behind the Syracuse VA Medical Center. No injuries were reported, but police described the suspect as 5'10 male, medium build, wearing a dark jacket, sweatpants, and a black hat. If you have any information following this incident, you can call the number on the screen. A student tested positive at Jamesville Elementary School. Positive at Jamesville Elementary School. Jamesville Elementary closed Monday after a positive case, but opened, reopened Tuesday. CDC says 40% of children who are COVID positive are asymptomatic. Superintendents are reassuring parents and students by increased cleanings. Renovations to the Carrier Dome have been underway for over a year, and Mornings on the Hill reporter Ford Hatchett is outside the dome this morning to detail how things are going. Ford, how are things looking out there? Yeah, Ryan, well, the, the dome's new roof, much anticipated. It's nearing its completion. In fact, this morning, as we speak, you can see some of the renovations going on, late last-minute construction on the roof behind me. Once it's completed, the dome will be ready to host Orange Sports for the first time since March. But Chief Facilities Officer at the University, Pete Salas, says the dome could actually be used as a classroom. We need this facility for our students now. I need to get this place open, not only for athletics, but for our students. It's very, very important to the student body. I with a limited number of classrooms on campus large enough to accommodate COVID restrictions, Sala says students should be able to access the dome to complete their work. Sala says the long-awaited new roof and air conditioning are on their way to being completed as well. The renovations also include projects that make the dome more accessible to those with disabilities, such as concessions counters made for everyone. Not having a cutout where somebody in a wheelchair needs to roll up. If you and I are together and you're a chair user, you have an issue, we can go to the same counter and it's the right height. Now, Sala says the project is still scheduled to be completed by this Friday, just two days from now, which would give the university a week's worth of breathing room before the football team has their home opener against Georgia Tech next weekend. Ryan? The Barn Center is holding in-person classes on the basketball courts next to the women's building. The Fitness Center has also begun to host classes such as Zumba on Zoom. Huh. The gym in the Barn Center is now open by appointment. Our Mornings on the Hill, Samantha Crossan checked out a fundraiser Sunday morning held by the Flight Room Fitness, a local gym. How was that, Samantha? Go. The fundraiser held by Flight Room Fitness this weekend was for one of its members, Diane Vickis, who sustained an injury two months ago when she fell off a ladder. But the story you're about to see is about more than Diane and the injury. It's about a community of Flight Room Fitness members who rallied to support her. Take a look. Sunday's Flight Room Fitness Workout was a fundraiser for Diane Vickis, one of Flight Room's members who suffered from a spinal cord injury two months ago. Her life changed overnight when she became a quadriplegic. Jamar Clark, the owner of Flight Room Fitness, says that Vickis always brought positive energy to his classes. As soon as she stepped foot in the door, she was always happy, and she all uh, raised our level of, of joy. Many people have a difficult time recovering mentally from such a life-altering event, but Clark says it is Diane's ability to maintain such a positive mindset that sets her apart from other people. She is moving so fast and progressing so fast, but keeping a strong mind through the whole, whole situation that, um, to me, that is what like a, a champion does. Now, normally, Clark's workouts are in the parking lot behind his gym. 
but the fundraiser attracted so many people that he needed to move locations here to the Aloft Syracuse Inner Harbor, that way people could still socially distance. The fundraiser attracted 40 people, which is the most that a Flight Room Fitness workout has seen since the beginning of the pandemic. Clark says that even though the fundraiser was successful, it is just a start. He plans to host an event every six months to continue helping Vickis fundraise her recovery. We'll have a purpose uh, that's just more than us getting together as a community, but coming together for Diane. Despite having to adapt to a new normal, Clark says that he knows Vickis will remain positive. Go. Vickis has also partnered with Help Hope Live, which is a nonprofit that's going to help her fund her medical expenses. If you want to help Vickis rebuild her life, the link to donate is at the bottom of the screen. Back to you in the studio. If you're comfortable coming to the ballot box in November, the last day to apply online for an absentee ballot is on October 27th. But post office officials say they cannot guarantee timely delivery within 15 days of the election. November 2nd is the final day to apply for an in-person for an absentee ballot. November 3rd, or election day, is the last day to postmark a ballot received by November 10th. Make sure to get those votes in. With election day right around the corner, COVID-19 concerns have kept people away from the ballot box. New info suggests staying home isn't the only issue with voting during a pandemic. Typically during this time, the Onondaga Board of Elections begins its hiring process for elections inspectors. People hired to ensure the integrity of each and every vote. Now the BOE has to take precautions to prevent the spread of COVID-19. And that cost, well, it's expensive. So we'll have extra inspectors at every polling place that will... Uh... Uh, be assigned the task of maintaining social distance uh, inside the polling place and uh, making sure our, uh, all our environment is clean inside the polling place, that tables are wiped down after every use, that uh, polling machines are wiped down after every use, uh, and that voters uh, remain safe uh, while they come and vote in person. Other costs like PPE, sanitary supplies, and extra polling inspectors seem small, but Sarney says that on a county level, the costs are massive and troublesome. Um, you know, we have a lot of grant money in Onondaga County uh, that we've kind of saved for a rainy day, and it, it's raining. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're, we're using a lot of it. But that being said, we're, I mean, that grant money was slated for, you know, machine replacements and stuff down the line. So we're going to feel this budget hit. Just how badly Syracuse feels the hit is something Sarney says we won't know until after the election. And coming up on Mornings on the Hill, a local business is hurt from a lack of fans in the dome. Time to check your weather for I hope today. everyone put away those jackets today in Syracuse because it is going to be a high 77 degrees with temperatures mostly sunny and temperatures will drop down to 66 degrees later tonight. But the national news stories for today is Hurricane Sally, which made landfall in Alabama as a category two storm that is threatening record floods. And for today, let's look at the five day forecast. Friday it will be mostly sunny and cool with the high of 61 degrees and a low of 39. The Saturday it will also be mostly sunny and cool with the high of 59 and a low of 38. And on Sunday, you'll be able to enjoy mostly sunny skies with the high being of 61 degrees and the low dropping to 40. Back to you in the studio. Well, local shops in downtown Syracuse see an uptick in sales when the orange are in the dome. This year, well, the players are playing, but the fans across the country have to watch from their TVs. Morning on, Morning on the Zone on the Hill reporter Sierra Ryder says no games means less money for the Syracuse economy. Hi, Ryan. It was announced Friday that there will be no fans allowed inside the Dome for the foreseeable future. And this is going to affect some of the stores in downtown Syracuse that typically rely on these fans for sales. One shop that will be feeling the effects is Scholars and Champs. This store sells a variety of vintage Syracuse University clothing and paraphernalia. It typically is a popular destination for students and fans on a football weekend. Now, store owner Bert Offsesser told me he's already been noticing a difference. 
I've been selling more fashion stuff that's not sports stuff as opposed to selling the sports stuff. I mean, it definitely helps selling to more locals as opposed to just students. Um, so I've definitely focused on, you know, broadening who I, you know, kind of advertise to. Scholars and champs sees up to 40 transactions on an SU football weekend. And now the goal is to just maintain its sales and reach out to the existing Syracuse community for its sales. Back to you in the studio. Revised 2020 and 2021 schedule with some plays replaced with a virtual medium. Syracuse Stage is moving to an online program for the entirety of the fall season. The six show series will be available online to those who pay to subscribe in the Syracuse community. Marketing Director Joe Whelan says despite the shift online, the theater is still losing out on in-person revenue. We wouldn't expect to make even half of what we would make in a normal season. We would expect that, you know, it, 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 if things go well, hard to say, maybe 40%. We lost, in terms of revenue from last season, we're, we, were, we were down a, a, about a million dollars. The music and entertainment industry took a hard blow with COVID-19 shutting down bars and recording studios. A rally being held on September 22nd to let hashtag let the music play is challenging the executive order by Andrew Cuomo, Governor Andrew Cuomo that is, that limits large gatherings. Field packed with Syracuse students, parking lots cluttered with cars, and feeling the vibration of your favorite artist blare through your bones is usually what Syracuse students experience each year for Juice Jam, a virtual concert with headlining artists like A Boogie with the Hoodie, Ari Lennox, and Bad Bunny took students to their laptops and screens this year. Be virtual, I thought it was pretty good because, I mean, again, we're getting used to this whole new world. So I think it was good just to have something and for it to be virtual, it was really good. For the virtual concert, I honestly think they did the best that they could have done. I mean, there could have been that live aspect. 400 students gathered on Vimeo. Students say it just wasn't the same and look forward to a COVID-free juice gym next year. Well, Syracuse University Libraries are offering a virtual series of workshops starting this week. A bit of a solution here. The workshops include writing, research, art, and other ways that SU feels students can grow while still on Zoom. The seminars are available to students, faculty, and researchers with registration. And it's still not too late to sign up for one of the several club sports teams and intramural events on campus. Steven has the latest on how you can get involved. Steven, you there? Thanks, Ryan. Are you still trying to get <clears throat> involved <clears throat> in activities on campus? If the answer to that question is yes, it is not too late for students to sign up for one of the many club sports and intramural events that Syracuse has to offer. If you go online to the Barnes Center at the Arch, under Be Active, there are links that list all the club sports teams, as well as the intramural teams you can get involved in. By clicking on the intramural sports tab, it will take you to the home page, where you will then click on the link that says I Am League's website. This website will show you all of the intramural events as well as club sports teams that you can sign up for. I am definitely intrigued by the punt, pass, and kick intramural event. You have until October 1st to register before the deadline closes. There are also a bunch of different video game leagues and tournaments you can get involved in for those of you who are video game fanatics. Make sure to jump at the opportunity to register for one of the many ways to get involved at Syracuse University. Also, Make sure to keep in mind that different club sports and intramural events are subject to change due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Reporting live from Mornings on the Hill, I'm Stephen Shoemaker. Back to you, sir. Thanks, Stephen. Coming up on Mornings on the Hill, Syracuse football comes off their first game of the season, and what will an empty ball carrier is go mean for off home games at the semester third this year? With those long arms at 6 2 Welcome back to Mornings on the Hill. I'm James Cargan with your sports update. And it was an off season of injuries, opt outs and coaching changes. But the Syracuse football team finally took the field this past Saturday. The Orange traveled to a fanless Chapel Hill to take on North Carolina. But a game many thought would never happen turned into one SU fans wished they never saw. The Orange came in having won its last six season openers. Lots of new faces this year for the Orange, including both coaching coordinators. First drive of the game for UNC Super Sophomore Sam Howell finds Garrett Walston 11 yards out for the score. 
Tar Heels up 7-0. The DSU defense did step up later in the first. The pass from Sam Howell, the deflection from Ifatu Melofanwu right to Michael Jones for the pick. The Orange, though, would turn it over on downs. The offense just could not get it going. But they did catch a break late in the first half. Orange now down 7-3. Noah Cooney, the punter, gets blown up. That's a 15-yard penalty. Quarterback Tommy DeVito would lead them down the field for this 29-yard field goal attempt at the end of the half. But Andre Schmidt whiffs it to the right, and it's 7-3 at the break. Second half, more big defensive plays for the Orange. Sam Howell back to pass again. And who else but Andre Sisko with the INT, the 13th of his career. That leads all active players in the country. The D kept SU in this game, but things did fall apart in the fourth quarter. First, it was Javante Williams taking in for one yard out to make it 17-6. Then Williams again with a six-yard score, the second of his three rushing touchdowns in the quarter. The Tar Heels would go on to win 31-6. And after the game, Syracuse coach Dino Baber said a silver lining of this one was the fact that they even played it. I'm excited that we got a game in. You know, I told the official, I said, he asked me something during the game. I said, I'll tell you what, I'm a lot happier than the Big Ten coaches. And I bet you you're a lot higher than the Big Ten, a lot happier than the Big Ten officials. We're playing football in the ACC. We're going to get better and we're excited. The SU's men's soccer season finally gets underway this weekend. And after an offseason unlike any other, the Orange are ready to get back on the pitch. Our own Josh Miller has more. Syracuse University men's soccer season kicks off this Saturday with an exhibition matchup against the University of Virginia. Here at Hookway Fields, the Orange have been hard at work preparing for this season. From Zoom workouts to personal workouts, the Orange are eager to play. Head coach Ian McIntyre spoke about his group and the excitement heading into this season. As a group, we're really excited by by the chance to, to to compete and and to do something that we all love this is um uh now we're getting closer and closer and uh, with a chance now to to pull on the uniforms and, and represent syracuse university coach mcintyre also stressed with having players from all around the world it was not easy to get everyone together we've got student athletes we've got players from all across the world and all across the country so um and and each had their own challenge. Uh, this year's roster includes 14 newcomers and 14 returners. The Orange are led by a senior combo of Sandre Norheim and Simon Triantifalu. Norheim, a defender from Norway, was nominated as an ACC preseason watch list. The two combined for 15 points with six goals last season and look to lead this young Orange roster. Triantifalu says the goal is the same it has been every season. Each game, we're going to just go and try and win each game, focus on each game. And uh, our goal is to win the ACC championship. That's still been the goal. And eventually the NCAA championships in the spring. The Orange look to put together a successful 2020 campaign, no matter the circumstances. That first test for this young men's soccer team comes September 25th against the United States Naval Academy. Josh Miller, Mornings on the Hill. Finally gone from New England, the Bills come in picked by some to win the AFC East. The Jets, well, not so much. To Orchard Park we go, and it was all Buffalo from the start. First quarter, Josh Allen with the bootleg from three yards out, and he could have crawled into the end zone from there. Bills up 7-0, and it would not get better for the Jets. Later in the first, Allen back to pass, and the Jets clearly practicing their social distancing. Not one green jersey in sight, and the easy pitch and catch to Zach Moss for the score. The Bills doubled their lead in the first, and they would triple it in the second. Allen, the quick throw to John Brown, and he does the rest from 17 yards out. The Bills won this one comfortably by the score of 27 to 17. And in the NBA, Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat took down the Boston Celtics to take a 1-0 lead in the Eastern Conference Finals. And the Denver Nuggets completed the seat through 3-1 series comeback to stun the L.A. Clippers in Game 7 of Round 2. They'll take on LeBron and the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. Well, basketball season may be right around the corner, but for one former SU player, helping local youths improve their game has no offseason. Here's Matt Majinski with more. I'm outside of the Carmelo K. Anthony Basketball Center, named after the freshman sensation who led Syracuse to their first and only national title. And while Melo's had a successful career in the NBA, traveling all over the country, one of his former Cuse teammates, Billy Edelin has stayed in the Syracuse area. His reason? To help showcase the basketball talent in the 315. 
Between mine, chop, chop. Boom, there we go, one, two. Good job. Originally where I'm from in the DMV is tons of uh, talented kids and stuff. So when I was here, I saw a lot of kids that reminded me of kids there. I'm like, Syracuse, but not a hotbed has some talent but I could tell they needed some of the, the direction and polish. So 13 years later now, a lot of those kids are all driving, um, some coaching, some you know playing overseas, just doing all types of stuff. So here we are. Kids, um, you know, grow right in front of you with their game, their confidence. So you just see them be successful. And that's like more important than even money. And those two girls practicing with Edelin drove half an hour to receive instruction. But to Edelin, that drive to get better stands out. You got kids, they from Phoenix, you got kids from here. You see kids, I don't, you know, and they know, so it's, that means something to me. And Edelin said that his brand, which is called Gym Rats, is open to anyone. But there is one condition. Come ready to work hard. And Edelin also told me that his instructions are open to anyone and come free of charge, but he does work on prices with some people, it's just up to the person on what route they want to take with him. He runs them in the evenings at Dunbar Park on South State Street in Syracuse and just says to come ready to listen and try hard. For Mornings on the Hill, I'm Matt Majinski. Now back to James in the studio. Thank you, Matt, and that'll wrap it up for sports today. Sierra, I'll send it back to you. So good to come here on Mornings on the Hill. One last look at your weather and a visit to Central New York's Apple Orchid as apple picking season is underway. Stay with us, that story and more just ahead. The start of fall is only five days away and Mornings on the Hill reporter Sarah Alshea shares how students are getting a jump start on the upstate fall tradition. Not too long ago, being out during COVID-19 is was not a, being, not too long ago being out with friends was not an option because of COVID-19. Now SU students can do different activities while staying safe, starting with an activity upstate New York knows a lot about. So it's really fun to be out with friends. <laughs> Julia Bauman is one of the students who went on this weekend's apple picking event hosted by the Barnes Center. Students say this event is about more than just picking apples. So Getting to be outside and enjoy like the nice day and you know, get to spend time with friends somewhere off campus has been really nice. The saying goes, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And for the Barnes Center, keeping doctors away and students healthy is their main priority during events like these. Everybody has to be wearing masks on the bus and during the activity as well. And uh, we highly encourage social distancing. Student leaders at the Barnes Center say these activities help those who've been feeling stuck inside. This gives people the opportunity to get out and do something uh, while also like staying safe because being outside is one of the better options. And while student leaders are taking steps to make sure students are leaving healthy, they also hope students um, are leaving with some really good apples, uh, maybe some cider donuts, but also um, closer relationships with their friends. If you have apples on your grocery list, consider signing up for the next apple picking event. There are three more and you can find the details on your wellness portal. For Mornings on the Hill, I'm Sarah Alshea. Well, the month of September is an important one to the Hispanic community in Central New York. Mornings on the Hill reporter Xavier Brown is live to tell us why. Xavier? Yesterday marked the beginning of the Hispanic His Heritage Month here on here locally and nationally, where people took part of the celebrations all over the place. This month provides an opportunity for students and faculty to learn more about the culture and history of Americans who have laid groundwork. Like even throughout like middle and high school and elementary school. Um, and so I'm from Miami, so you know, Latinx, Latinx kind of culture is everything there. So being able to celebrate it here, it's definitely another piece of home. It will be held this month, documentary screenings, panel discussions, performances, and lectures. I think understanding that SU is a PWI, a predominantly white institution, it's important to keep that community strong. The idea for the Hispanic Heritage Month celebrated throughout September and the first half of October began as a way to promote history, culture, and the contributions of Hispanic Americans, specifically those whose ancestors came from Spain, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. Communities mark the achievements of Hispanic and Latino Americans with festivals and educational activities. Hispanic influences are tightly knitted in the fabric of American life. Music, food, and art are just a few of the things they celebrate this month. 
some Greek organizations, as well as the Office of Multicultural Affairs, the enrollment, and the student experiment, experience will be hosting events all month. And you can find more of that information at the website on your screen. Finally this morning, certified millennial Paul Rudd wants you to wear a mask. The celebrity anchor teamed up with the New York Governor Andrew Cuomo to provide a funny and also informative video, encouraging young people to, well, mask up. Rudd has just one message for millennials. Check this out. My name is Paul, and I'm six feet tall almost. And I wear my mask, and it's all I ask that you wear your mask. Please wear your mask. Just wear a mask. Just wear a mask. It's easy. It's simple. You gotta love Paul Rudd. That is going to do it for us this morning. I'm Sayer Williams. Follow us on social media. Well, guys, mask up. I'm Ryan Clark. Thanks for watching Mornings on the Hill, and we'll see you next Wednesday, live at 10 a.m., right here on OTN.